Hey guys, it's Little Miss Wannabe Homesteader, and today is going to be our first video. Yay! It's too good to miss out on. So a lot of you have seen our chicken coop and the hoop run that we have, and I've gotten a lot of questions on it. Today we're going to make a tunnel for our garden that is the same concept as the hoop run that we used for the chickens. So um, if you have seen me on Instagram and have commented or questioned regarding the hoop run, you wanna watch this video today. Uh, make sure that you guys have a pen and paper ready or that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard to ask you to do. You could just press rewind. <laughs> Watch it again. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh gosh. Um, so uh, we still have to go to the store and get a few more supplies. We are going to be repurposing some of the items that are being used. And like Keith always says, what do you say? Don't buy what you need. It is what you got. But we're buying what we need right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a smart man. That's why I love him. So I will um, look forward to having you guys along for the journey. Welcome to our home. We're excited to be here. We're excited to be a part of the homesteading community. And let's have fun. panels all lined up and this is going to equal to one section of the garden tunnel that we're making. Can you tell us the size of these panels? These panels are 16 foot long by 50 inch tall. Combined together they almost make about nine feet, about a hundred inches. Um, Right now we're going to weld them together. I like to weld everything together when it comes to steel. You can twist tie these together with wire if you choose to, it's okay. I just do it because it's more structural. It, it holds together a lot longer. Um, now if you're going to weld this stuff, this is all galvanized wire. Please make sure that you do it outside. If you do it in a shop, you need to have ventilation and a mask because this Galvanized metal is not good to breathe when it's being burned. All right. Well, for now, with any fabrication process, right now I'm going to tack it all together. Now you can. I just do my tacks every foot. Tacks are a lot easier to break apart if you make a mistake. It's a fabrication rule. If you ever do any welding at all, you just always make sure that you tack it before you weld it. Okay, I got all the panels welded together. If you want to come down here and take a look. Look at the beads, look at how they're lined out. It's got a bead tack, bead tack, bead tack. Skip about a foot. Inch long welds. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, just make sure that you're burning in. Okay. Now the next step is we're gonna weld these pieces of pipe. The other one I had used up the rest of my um, rest of my uh, half inch gas pipe I had laying around that I used or that was a demo. So it was just, I'm repurposing it for that one. And now I'm out of pipe. I had to go buy some more. This stuff's about a two bucks a foot. So you count that into your build if you're gonna if you're gonna do it exactly the way I have it here. What kind of pipe did you get? This is half inch gas black pipe. Okay. It's just, it, remember, it's got that coating on it too, so if you weld it, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get the, get the weld started. So, 
Would you recommend someone to use like zip ties for this? Uh, no, zip ties are not strong enough because when we bend this thing, it's going to put a lot of a lot of uh, tension. It's basically making it do something it's not really made to do. These cattle panels aren't made to do this, but we're going to make them do it. There's nothing wrong with it, but you're putting tension on things. So if you're if you wanted to wire tie these together, I'd recommend a pretty heavy gauge wire, probably like a at least a 12 gauge wire, and you're going to want to wrap every single. <laughs> Every single square you see down here, every single square you're going to need to wrap it. The same with when you put this base pipe on here, you're going to need to wrap it. Now if you wanted to get creative and you wanted to make the base with this pipe, you could also do, you could also get it threaded and use the fittings. You could use 90s and, and all that stuff to make your, to make it work. Let's go look at the hoop run that we made uh, that is attached to the chicken coop because I've gotten a lot of comments on that and a lot of questions and I thought I'd take you over and take a look at that one. And is that one any different from what you're doing here? Um, it's a little different in the sense that I use different base material. Instead of using pipe like I'm using on these ones, I used rebar I had laying around. It's a 5 8 thick rebar. It's pretty heavy. But it's kind of expensive, but I had it laying around. It was extra. So that's what I mean. Use what you got and don't buy what you need. And that one has bra more braces on it. Yeah. Right? So far, I've used all the pipe I have and all the material that I could have, that I have, to be able to build this. So I had to go buy a little bit more to make it, to finish the job. So, so here's our chicken coop. And as you can see, it has the hoop run next to it. Now the hoop run is not attached to the coop. If needed, we can move that hoop run at any time. Let's go take a look inside and I'll show you the difference between this hoop run and the hoop tunnels we made for the garden. So as you can see, the hoop run has reinforcements, rebar, <laughs> there and there and then down at the end and a crossbar. This is so sturdy that you can't even wiggle it. We also have the door framed in with the recycled piping as well. Do you guys like it? Tell me, do you like your new coop? Do you like your new coop? They are not interested. Not interested in talking to me this morning because I don't have any treats. Hey, hey cutie. So there you have it. That's the difference between the hoop run and the hoop tunnels for the garden. There's the exterior door to the hoop run. It's made from all recycled materials. The corrugated metal at the bottom was on the barn when we bought the property. Pretty cute. Mr. Wannabe is very talented. I'll keep him around. Maybe for a lifetime. So that's the hoop run. Like I said, it could be moved at any time. And there you have it. So what are you gonna do right now? Oh, oh right now this pipe is painted. All this pipe has got some paint on it and a little bit of rust. So I'm going to take that off with a wire wheel and a grinder just to get the bare metal. The welds will sit a lot, or welds will burn in a lot deeper and penetrate and have more tensile strength 
if you clean your surface area when you weld. Milwaukee doesn't also just make cheap, nasty beer. They do make pretty good power tools. Back to you, Bob. My name's Keith. Back to you, Keith. <laughs> Back to you, wannabe. Tiny. What? Okay, we rolled it on the bottom bars right here, just like this. You can see that. Yeah. Both sides. Yep. Cut it to fit. Okay. Now we need to flip it. Flip it over. So you can flip it by yourself? Yes. It is very heavy. But... This should be fun to watch. <laughs> Yikes. Are you sure that's a good idea to be standing right there? It's my stump. Yeah, you look like you're getting ready to fall off. Okay, I am. Is that okay. better? Yes, that's better. Luckily for us, we have this little lip right here. Oh yeah, we're lucky. <laughs> we have a lip. Uh, if you don't have a lip, <laughs> uh, make sure you get a couple of people to help you do this next part. You can make part. a person be your lip. Yeah, you can make a person do it. You're gonna need at least two people to sit on that side while the other, while the other person lifts it up from the middle and the other people on the that back. Step on the bar back there so that you can raise it. Nope, you're going to stand on the end. Remember? No. Wow. Stand on it. Okay. okay. Woo, I'm on it. Hang on to it. Don't you let it go because it'll fuck you right off of there. Stand both feet on it. Okay. Both feet. There you go. All right. Now we're up. And on that end. And on this end. Try. Yeah. But it's not straight. That's fine. We'll put that in later. Okay. Go on this side right now. Okay. Usually when I do these, I like to go at least six foot eight apart from end to end. The reason why, if you come over here and look at the side out, kind of bows out just a little. You know, how I have the chicken coop, uh, the chicken run made is it is at six eight. So it doesn't do that. It just stays nice and consistent. Nice consistent arch. But it's not that hard to fix. All you gotta do is just bend it in. I know we're gonna do it that do that. 
Show us how it's now done. Now we're going to do that. Now we're going to do that. You do that. Oh, yeah. Strong. If you are shorter than 5 foot 10, you probably won't be able to do this. <laughs> so grab a friend. Now that looks a lot better. And it made it taller. It made it more consistent. All right, it's good, it's good. Let's go set it up. All right, there we go. I'm right at 5'10", so you probably have, I wonder how tall that actually is. Let me guess, you got a tape measure. Whoa! Ground height to here, I bought six foot eight and a half. That's pretty good height. Easier to put in. Speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I didn't think it was easy. <laughs> that one was easier than that one. We were trying to move the bale and. <laughs> Some of the vines got super smashed yesterday in the process, so I was worried. Look at that beautiful leaf. Oh, it does look like this got some damage on it. Do you see that? As you can see, the blooms are now on full display. Before, a lot of them were stuck underneath all the vines piled up on the straw bale. And now that we pulled the vines up, all the blooms are easily accessible. So they're gonna get pollinated a lot better than what they were. Cause I was having some pollination issues. Pollination is definitely not going to be an issue now. It's just humming over here right now.
It's that moment when you have to ask yourself, do you ever feel like you're being watched by a couple of turkeys?